In today's video, I'm going to show you three ways on how to remove hard inquiries from your credit report step by step. In fact, what I'm about to share with you is exactly what I have done for and coached clients in the past to get these results. All I ask of you is to give this video a like because everything in this video will give you the same if not better results than hiring a credit repair agency. What's up winners? My name is Nam. If you're new here, welcome. Here we talk all things credit and helping you level up. So start now by subscribing so you don't miss out on any future videos. So in this video, I'm going to try to break things down step by step, but if you need more help, I do have extra resources on my website. This video is going to be meant for anyone who has less than excellent credit, meaning that if your score is less than 720, then this is for you. So depending on your credit, this can cost you hundreds if not thousands of dollars when you are trying to borrow money. So before I actually go over all of the ways, you need to understand the difference between a hard pull and a soft pull. First off, a hard pull or inquiry is a thing that affects your credit score. If you have ever applied for a loan or a credit card, this usually results in a hard pull and this will usually bring your score down by a few points until it recovers a few months later. Hard inquiries usually stay in your credit report for a maximum of 24 months until they fall off at month 25. Once the 25th month rolls around, they should be automatically deleted from your credit report and no one would reference them in their decision to approve you for the next credit card or loan. For that hard pull to happen, this requires authorization from you. This could either be verbally or through signature. But make no mistake, there are plenty of times unauthorized inquiries happen. This usually happens from fraud or at dealerships. Now, FICO scores, which is the only scores that matter, only consider hard inquiries over a 12 month period. So when it comes to shopping for rates, auto and mortgage inquiries, that occur within the prior 30 days to scoring have no effect on scores. So for example, let's just say that I'm trying to buy a car. This week, I got my credit pulled for a loan. Next week, I do the same, since I'm still trying to find a better lender. That inquiry from last week should not affect my score that I had pulled the second time. Once it's past this 30-day window, auto and mortgage inquiries that happen within the 45-day window only count as one inquiry. With credit card applications, they are a different story. These don't get bunched up like auto or mortgage inquiries. So these ones will boost your score more if you were to get them deleted. Now let's move on to soft pulls. This type of inquiry does not affect your credit score. So the most simple example when a soft pull happens is when you pre-qualify for a credit card to see your odds of approval. You can either initiate this yourself or companies can do this automatically. If you ever sign up for apps like Credit Karma or personal banks that provide your credit score, this is considered a soft pull. So now that we understand inquiries, let's go over the steps to dispute them. The first thing that you need to do is to grab your credit report. You can get a free one from each of the big three credit bureaus at annualcreditreport.com every single week. All the links will be down in the description below. There are paid options, but getting reports directly from the source will be the most accurate and up to date. Now, once you head onto the landing page of annualcreditreport.com, it's gonna look something like this. There's gonna be this big red button where you can press request your free credit reports and that's pretty much it. So just click on it. It'll tell you the exact steps of what you need to do to get your online reports. You essentially just fill out a form. You pick the ones that you want. Then from there, you can download them. You can view it online like via PDF or you can just print them out. So let's request our reports. So I'm just gonna plug in my personal information right now. So once I plug in all of my personal information and I click next at the very bottom, it should land this page right here. This is where you can request all of your credit reports all in one place. So if you check all three of them, it would just turn into a window where it would ask for your mobile phone number, your email address. It would send you a text message for a verification code where you would have to plug in. Then from there, you can just see all your reports all in one place. For most places of where you wanna see your inquiries is usually at the very bottom or the very end. Um, I'll share some screenshots of some actual reports so you can get a better idea of how they look. One thing that I have to make note of is that whenever you attempt to try to get free annual credit reports from that website, you may encounter an error where it does not allow you to get the actual credit report. So this is where you may have to go directly to the website. Now, once you get your reports, you can either download them by PDF or just print them out, but you just wanna find a way to keep it organized because you wanna make sure that you can highlight it, circle it, and you could number it so you it is easier reference when you want to dispute them later. When you're trying to decide which hard inquiry to remove, it is best to start with the ones that are ordered in two months. But here's an inside strategy. You can't dispute accounts that were recently opened within two weeks of application. So why this works is that the inquiry already has been reported, but the account has not been. So this is the only workaround for open accounts. Now, if you decide to go this route, do it at your own risk because you can still close that account but I have seen success in this strategy. Now, next one I'm about to cover is completely optional, but it may make the results better, 
but it just takes a little bit longer. So what you may want to consider doing is freezing secondary credit bureaus. This can include LexisNexis and SageStream and Innovis. The reason why you want to freeze these accounts is that whenever you are disputing with the credit bureaus, sometimes they try to verify your disputes to third-party credit bureaus such as the ones listed. Now, if you decide to freeze any of these, it can take some time. Sometimes it could be as soon as 24 hours, but sometimes it can take up to 30 days. Now, depending on how quickly you want to try to remove or dispute these inquiries really dictate whether or not you want to freeze these. So freezing these would better your odds of removing these hard inquiries. So if you had the time, I would recommend doing it. Now, once you consider doing both of these things, which is getting your credit report and freezing secondary credit bureaus, this is where we can start disputing these inquiries. So the first method that we will be going over is by calling the credit bureaus directly. So all of their phone numbers will be listed right here. So you can take a screenshot or pause the video so you have them whenever you're ready to call. Now, once you are committed and ready to contact the credit bureaus, there will be an automated system where you need to be directed to the fraud department. Now, if they don't give you the option to do so or they just require you to say something, just say that you want to remove fraudulent hard inquiries from your credit report. From there, they will redirect you to someone who can help you with your dispute. So whenever you're making this call, just make sure that you have a legitimate reason for disputing this hard inquiry. So let me give you an example. Let's just say that you went around shopping for a car. When you went to the car dealership, they may ask for some personal information like a driver's license and maybe a social security number to see if they can see what kind of rates you can get pre-approved for. The key word here is pre-approved. So whenever a pre-approval happens, this is a soft inquiry and does not have a negative effect on your credit score. But there has been many of times in the past where they say that they would not pull your credit, then just a few weeks later, you see a shotgun on your credit report. This is actually a violation of the Fair Credit Reporting Act since you did not give them authorization to pull your credit. Typically, for someone to pull your credit, you will need to authorize them to do so either by electronic signature or a physical signed document. So whenever you call the credit bureaus, don't just say that I want to remove these hard inquiries because they didn't approve me for that credit application. That would not fly and would not work. So the only way you can dispute items off your credit report is if they are fraudulent, inaccurate, and unverifiable. Another reason why you can dispute hard inquiries is that if you cannot recall that you did a hard inquiry. Now, this is a valid reason. If you cannot recall if you did a hard inquiry, it is up to the credit bureaus to investigate and confirm whether or not that you did. Typically, if they cannot verify this information, then the hard inquiry would have to be removed. Now, if successful, you should see this updated on your credit report within the next 24 to 72 hours. Now, let's just say that you don't like to talk on the phone or you crack under pressure, especially when someone is asking you a bunch of questions about your credit. Then it is worth trying the next method, which is the OG method of what credit repair companies use, which is disputing the hard inquiries via letter. Now, I do have a free hard inquiry removal letter down in the description below. But as a disclaimer, you will get added on to my newsletter, but you can unsubscribe at any time if the newsletter is not bringing you any value whatsoever. Now, once you make a copy of this letter template, you would just plug and play the information from your credit report and your personal information. But before you send out this letter, just make sure that you have all the required paperwork ready so it is easier to send this letter out. So let's quickly go over this letter. All right, so once you made a copy of the letter, it's gonna look something like this. It's gonna be a Google Doc where you can fully customize it to your specific situation. Now, this does require you to have a Gmail. If you do not have a Gmail account, then just make one, it's completely free. So up top here, this is where you would just plug in your information, the date of today's date or whenever you are disputing, your name, address. You would also put in your social security number. It's okay to put your last four, but sometimes it's better to put your full. This depends on how comfortable you are since this is gonna be sent via mail. The reason why you do this is that the credit bureaus will be much easier for them to identify who you are as a person. Next, the attention to the customer relations department. This will be the company's name, street address. This will be the credit bureau, okay? So I have listed more instructions of this letter down below. Just remember that do not send this part right here. But depending on the credit bureau that you are disputing against, this is the up-to-date information of where to send this letter. So Experian, Equifax, TransUnion, all that information is right here, right? So going back to our letter, this is where you would just kind of plug and play, right? So whatever's in bold is what you would have to make adjustments to. So I'm writing to request a removal of unauthorized credit inquiry or inquiries. So if you have more than one, just make sure you annotate that on my whichever credit bureau report. So Equifax, Experian, 
transparent or transunion. Let's just say that you have one hard inquiry from Chase, but it's on Equifax and Experian. Just make sure that Equifax and Experian have a separate letter, okay? Do not have one letter for inquiries that does not reflect all of the bureaus. So each bureau will have its own separate letter. Then my latest credit report shows a number of hard inquiries that you are disputing. It could be five, six, two, it doesn't matter. Make adjustments here. Then from here, so this is where I spoke earlier about getting a PDF or just printing out the last page of your hard inquiries and just numbering them off. So you can mail it with this letter. So let's just say that number one, the creditor is like JP Morgan, which is Chase account. You may not see the account number, but if you do have it, cool. If not, you don't need to type anything in there. I just update this information down here. So please have these unapproved inquiries removed from my credit report. Please update me with a full credit report on your finding within 30 days, as it is harming my ability to obtain new credit. I would appreciate a copy of my credit report once this issue is resolved. Thank you for your assistance. Then from here, just type in your name, no wet signatures, okay? So this also has extra instructions in it that you can refer to once you download it. If you don't want to refer to this video, just make sure that before you send this letter, just put the correct documentation in it. Majority of the time, you're going to need a copy of your driver's license and also a utility bill. Bank statements could work, cable bills could work, but usually the strongest ones are usually utility bills like water, electricity, or something like that that shows that you currently live at that address and also a uh, photo ID, a copy of that. Now, you should hear a response within the next 40 days or so. If you do not, then you can call the credit bureau to see what's going on or you can just follow up with another letter to see like, hey, following up on this letter, seeing what's going on with my dispute. Okay. Now, the reason why I say 40 days, even though in the letter you said 30 days, is that according to the FCRA, it gives them 30 days to respond back. So for 40 days is essentially when you send out the letter, it takes some time to get to the credit bureau. Then once they do their investigation and they send it back to you, then it will take some more time too, right? So that's why I say 40 days. Now, if it takes more than 40 days, if it comes back verified or unverified and it gets to removed, awesome. So if it does come back verified, I will show you something in the next strategy to help you get them removed. So I'm trying to over deliver the value you get from this video. So I'll post a link for all of the sites, the letter, everything that you, is mentioned in this video down in the description so you can check it out for yourself. So as mentioned before, you want to get a copy of your driver's license or photo ID and a statement that shows your residency, okay? Another thing that you may want to consider is actually a photocopy of your social security number because if you have a very common name like John Smith or whatever it is, right, they may come back as a letter saying that they need to verify who you are. This is usually just kind of like a stall strategy for them, so they will just hope that you forget to send them back, but sometimes I would just put it all in there just so it verifies everything and it can just process your dispute. Now, there are other options of documents that you can provide as well, but each credit bureau have their own criteria. So just make sure that you double check with them to see which ones that you can send if you don't have the usual photo ID, social security number, or utility bill. All right, so by now, you should have the letter, a copy of your credit report or the last page or whatever it is. It's optional to send it. It depends on if it's lengthy, but I usually like to send the last page so you know exactly that it is on there. Then all of the personal identifying paperwork should be in one letter. The next thing you want to do is to send this to the credit bureaus. I used to recommend sending by certified mail, but after testing thousands and thousands of letters sent, I found out there was really no difference in outcome. So sending this letter with just a regular first class stamp is more than enough. Now, once you send out this letter, you should hear a response back in 40 days. Now you can actually do a very similar process by disputing directly with the credit bureaus online, there's currently only one credit bureau that allows you to do this, which is Equifax. All the other two credit bureaus, they want to allow you to dispute inquiries through the online portal. The thing about disputing online is that this can definitely give you a quicker result, like if you were to call them on the phone, but generally I would not recommend disputing any delinquency, let alone hard inquiries via online, because you sign away a lot of your consumer rights when you do so. So credit repair was meant for consumers to dispute inaccurate information, and this was written a long time ago, where the only way to dispute items was via snail mail. So this is my recommended way to dispute delinquencies directly with the credit bureaus. Now let's go over the third method of what happens if you dispute via phone via mail or online and you still get a no. Now, if you have unauthorized hard inquiries, this is where you want to file a identity theft report through identitytheft.gov. So let's head over to the website. So their homepage should look something like this. Now to file a report, all you have to do is just click this big button right here, get started. Then you would want to report identity theft. Now you want to check which one applies, okay? So this one is going to be credit card accounts, very bottom, click continue. Then from there, you would click to open a fraudulent credit card account. Now, they're gonna ask you a bunch of questions. 
All you had to do is just go through all of the prompts and questions of what they asked. So let's do that. So this is going to be the information pertaining to the hard inquiry, right? So for instance, we've been using the example of Chase. So let's just say usually it's JP Morgan that lands on your credit report. So you would just fill in when did you notice this problem? Say January of this year, when the account was open January of this year. So just make sure you customize it to your specific situation, all right? Account number. Sometimes you may get an account number with a hard inquiry, but sometimes you don't. If you contacted the company, this is whether if you call through the phone or if you sent a letter out. So let's just say that you sent it out to TransUnion, company phone number. If you don't know it, that's fine. Email address, you don't have to plug it in, it's not required. Just press continue. Now this is where you would have to plug in your personal information, okay? So your name, last name, phone number. So when you plug in your phone number, like a cell phone number, it could be a landline. They would either send you a text or call you for a verification code. And once you do that, then that's when you can go ahead and process the complaint. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Right, so I plugged in my personal information, plug in my phone number, verify my confirmation code. This is some other details that you can plug in as well, like your email, secondary email address if you have any. Plug in your date of birth, current mailing address. Again, you don't have to plug this in there, but you can just for more information if you would like. Okay, so press continue. Now this will ask you if you know anything about the suspect. If you do, click yes. If you don't, then press no. Now let's go to additional information. So with the credit bureaus, have you reviewed a copy of your credit report? Yes, you have. That's how you notice that there was a fraudulent hard inquiry. Were there any fraudulent accounts included in your credit report? This is if the account was open. So if it was open, you could say yes. If no, then say no. Now this is where you would have to fill in information about the hard inquiry themselves. So let's just say that you got a inquiry from Chase. Usually is, is listed as JP Morgan. If you have more than one, this one allows you only to list up to three. So let's just say Wells Fargo, all right? Let's just say Bank of America, which is like the big three. If you have more, there's an option to fill out some more information a little bit later. So let's just start with these three. This will ask you if you requested a fraud alert. You can say no, yes, police report, if there was a data breach that you know of, or any debt collectors. All right, so let's click continue. Now, in your personal statement, this is where you can actually plug in more information about the inquiries. So let's just say that you have like 10 inquiries, right? So you can list them out more here. So you have to say something in this prompt for it'll allow you to go to the next window, okay? So let's just type something in. So let's press continue. Now this is where you can review your complaint. This will have your contact information up here. This will also tell you the company or the organization that there was an unauthorized hard inquiry. And from there, you can just check this box here, finalize it. Then from there, you can actually download a PDF that we will use later on to file a complaint with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, which is also known as the CFPB. So let's go over that process of filing a complaint through them. So you wanna to go to Consumer Finance Gov. This is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau's uh, main website. So to, to submit a complaint, go to this very top corner up here, click on that. And from there, there's going to be a button here to start a new complaint. Now, if you don't have an account already with them, you can just create one from here, plug in your first name, personal information, email, phone, and create a password. So since I already have an account, I'm just going to log in. All right, so once you log in, your complaint portal should look like this. What you want to click is credit report or other personal consumer reports. So click on that. At the very bottom, you would click on credit reporting, click next. Then from there, you would want to click improper use of your report, credit inquiries from unknown sources. Now, which best describes your problem? Credit inquiries on your report that you do not recognize. Have you tried to fix this problem? Yes, you either called them or you sent a letter out. Did you request information? You did. You usually request for a verification of this hard inquiry and their investigation. This is optional here. Did the company provide this information? No. So what information did you request? You don't have to type in anything here. So did the company provide this information? Just click no. Now this is where you would describe what happened. Uh, this is where you would go into detail, almost kind of like what you wrote on the dispute letter if you did send one out or what you spoke to the person online. Just say that I found there are some unauthorized hard inquiries on my TransUnion credit report that I did not authorize. This includes from JP Morgan, Chase, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Go, the list goes on and on, okay? Then what would be the fair resolution to this issue? You would say that since these are unauthorized hard inquiries that I did not do, I would like these to be removed from my credit report. This is where you want to attach the document of the identity theft complaint that you filed earlier. So you would just upload that PDF for that file right here so you can submit this with your complaint. All right, so to actually move on to the next prompt, we have to actually put in um, what has happened. So I just put in a little prompt here like what I stated earlier, saying that they were unauthorized, you call 
call them or you sent a letter, they ignore your complaint to remove the hard inquiries and it still remains. Okay. Um, the fair resolution would be the removal of, of these unauthorized inquiries. You would upload the document. Let's click next. Now, this is where you would actually plug in the company's name that the hard inquiry falls onto. So whether it is Equifax, TransUnion, or Experian, you would just find them, list them up. Equifax, Credit Bureau. This is, this is a bunch of them, but it's all the same. Okay. Next, I would actually provide as much information about you as you can to the CFPB just so they can identify you much easier when you file this complaint. So this can be the last for your social, um, also your date of birth, your name, that's fine too. And if you want to complain about another company, this is where if this hard inquiry falls onto other credit bureaus as well. So let's just say that this falls on Experian. Okay. Have you already tried to fix this problem? Yes. You called them or you sent a dispute letter. Did you request information from the company? Yes. What is your request? Optional. You don't have the marketing use personnel. And if you want to complain to another company, you just click no. Now let's click next. This will bring you to a new window of step five, which is who you're submitting this complaint for. So usually this is for you, you know, um, this would have your contact information up here. Um, you would also update any mailing addresses or personal details. So they have that verification data. Then they have more optional information like what's your age, sex, race, all this other stuff for identifying problems for their statistics and data and stuff like that. So you would just click review. Then you would take a look at the complaint. Then you could just hit submit from there. Now, after you file a complaint with the CFPB, you should see something within the next week or so with the credit bureaus. Okay. So they may actually close out any open disputes that you have with them since they would have to respond back to the CFPB. The CFPB is like the head honcho for financial companies. So every financial company that gets a complaint from the CFPB have to respond back to them. Now, as a reminder, you would only do this step in case if you did not have a positive outcome when you disputed with the credit bureaus via phone or letter before. So now let me give you a bonus, which is the fourth method that you can use to actually dispute hard inquiries, which is using an automatic software like Credit Rehab Pro. So rather than typing out every single letter or researching what's on each credit report for each credit bureau, this allows you to have it all in one place and just within a matter of a few clicks, it allows you to print out your dispute letter and then you can just send it out to the credit bureaus. Now this software also tracks it throughout the whole process. So you know when to follow up in the software and it will recommend you what to do next. Now let's talk about the cost. The software itself is free, but what is required is actually an active credit monitoring subscription to make it work properly. And that subscription will cost you around $39.95. But if you want the simplest way to create disputes, whether it is inquiries, collections, charge-offs, late payments, you name it, this software can handle it. Now, if you do want to learn more about Credit Rehab Pro, you can find a link down in the description. All right, so I went over all of the methods that you can do to dispute hard inquiries. You can find all the links down in the description below. I also do have a course that goes a little bit more in depth about how to dispute hard inquiries, but pretty much everything that I showed you in this video, you can do yourselves and get success. If you want to hang out with me some more and learn more about credit or just repair more things off your credit, check out these videos over here.